back to Minrathis. Uh, the city is pretty much precisely as you left it. Uh, still beautiful, still enormous, uh, still smelling thickly of incense. Uh, all the buildings still covered with climbing vines and flowers of different colors. For all its flaws, Minrathis sure is pretty. Uh, and you make it back to... Well, your first instinct, and correct me if I'm wrong, would probably be to go back to the Pavis estate. That's what I feel like. That's yeah. kind of our headquarters, home base, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there are a couple servants waiting outside the gates to take your horses. Uh, and Zevran, like, doesn't even acknowledge them. He, like, pushes open the gates very, very loudly, and they bang against the brick wall. Uh, and he storms uh, right up to the front doors. Yeah, I feel like, okay, I'll just follow, <laughs> follow after that. Quietly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you head into the Pavis estate and you can hear uh, Dorian's voice um, almost immediately uh, through the main hallway and slightly off to the right where you know the uh, the dining room is. Uh, and you catch him in the middle of a sentence. And he says, Lennon, you can't be serious. You can't come to Minrathis. Uh, and then a voice uh, that sounds a little distorted uh, somehow uh, answers, do you have any better ideas, Dorian? I spoke to Cassandra. She confirmed it. You're in a blight. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we got, like I pushed Cassandra forward and we all just sort of like wave awkwardly. <laughs> uh, he hasn't noticed you yet. He's got his back to the door. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Although I do like the image of you going like, anyway, Cassandra, go ahead. <laughs> right. <laughs> what? Me the door. I'm like, okay. Opens the door. It's <laughs> true. I did see him. Uh, Dorian turns around and says. Well, they're back already. Uh, Zivran pushes right past you and he says, Is that the Inquisitor? Dorian's like, Don't shout, I'm right here. He says, Inquisitor, we need you in Minrathis. Dorian's like, Don't encourage him. <laughs> I like mutter to myself, that's what I said. Do you have any idea how dangerous it is for important elven political figures in Minrathis? <laughs> I'm nodding vigorously in the background. <laughs> Uh, he, Dorian, by the way, is holding this pendant. Uh, it's like a locket. Um, it's open at the moment, and in the set into the inside of this locket is this small uh, scarlet crystal uh, that is glowing every time he speaks to it. Uh, and Zevran grabs Dorian's uh, wrist and like slams it against the table quite violently. Uh, and he says, I don't think you understand the severity of the issue, Magister Pavis. I saw an arch demon with my own two eyes. It's less than 200 miles from the city of Benrathis, a city with over a million people in it. We need to get the Inquisitor here now. We need to inform the Archon. We need to inform the Divine. We need to start getting things rolling. We need to go straight to Weishaupt if we can. And Dorian's like, easy, easy, Zevran. I understand the severity of the issue. I just don't think... And then the crystal glows again, uh, and you can hear the Inquisitor's voice saying, Dorian, it's all right. I'm going to be fine. I still have a fleet of my honor guard with me. There's nothing that's going to touch me. You need me there. You know the Magisterium isn't going to be very flexible with this. If the Lucerne come barreling into the middle of the Senate floor and start talking about there's a blight coming on, they're not going to believe you. He has a point. It does sound insane. And Dorian uh, sort of breathes hard through his nose. Uh, Mayveris, uh, who is sitting very, very quietly at the other end of the table, uh, looks up at you and she says, how was, uh, how was your journey? Well, we saw an archdemon and, you know. Apart, apart from the archdemon. <sighs> that was really the highlight of the entire trip. There wasn't really much else going on. Oh, wait, we did pick up another party member. And I like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we <laughs> brought Fenris like, back. awkwardly waving in the back. Okay. <laughs> We found a man with a dog. <laughs> Cat barks. <laughs> uh, Dorian's like, we'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. And Lennon says, I know I'm not technically the Inquisitor anymore, but I still have a lot of political muscles that I can flex. I can get the ball rolling. How else are you going to be able to get into Weishaupt? Dorian says, we still have Leliana here, and I'm sure if we maybe finagle something with the Archon, he'll be lenient. And Lennon says, Ah, oh, yes, Archon Radamus, known for being very amenable to finagling. And Dorian, like, uh, he leans forward on, on his arm and he's, like, massaging his forehead. Like, he looks like he just 
he really doesn't want to give Lannon the excuse to come to Minrathis. He looks like he's on your side, Sabre. Like, he is acutely <laughs> aware that if he invites an elven inquisitor into the middle of Minrathis, there's a high probability that he's going to get his, his ass assassinated. <laughs> uh, Dorian kind of takes a breath through his nose and he says, All right. All right, fine. I understand that the situation is more dire than we thought it was, and I... I can't argue that it would be good to have a little extra political muscle to flex in the face of a blight. Uh, and Mayveris very, very slowly takes a sip of her tea. And Dorian says, okay, yes, I'll have the room turned down for you. We await your arrival, Inquisitor. I'm not the Inquisitor anymore. Listen, I'll take the first ship across to Kirkwall, where I have in my estate. We still have that linked alluvian, right? And Dorian says, yes, I'll have it ready. Good. Altogether, the travel time should only be about two days. I'll see all of you soon. Try not to get killed by an archdemon before I get there. No promises, I mutter. <laughs> uh, Dorian closes the locket and he says, I really, really don't like this. None of us do, Dorian. I don't think anyone's particularly happy about the situation. Lannon is the best friend I've ever had, and he's putting himself in a lot of danger to come here. And I just, he takes a deep breath and he says, it's fine. What are the next steps? He says, well, he, uh, you all kind of sit down around the table and he says, well, I mean, he wasn't wrong. We needed to inform the Archon and the Magisterium. The Divine needs to know. I'm sure Leliana will be in our corner all the way. The Arishok is in town. We might as well inform him. We need to get to Weishaupt and get the Grey Wardens on board. We should probably inform all the regional leaders of Thetis, but especially King Alistair. Like, the, the names that he's listing off, it's kind of like, here's a bunch of people that we need to talk to. And then he, like, starts listing off a whole bunch of extraordinarily important political figures. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm getting, like, more and more, like, my eyes are just, like, enormous. And I'm just like, this is, no, this is out of my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I guess we'll just go in order of whoever's closest, which I guess the Archon is closest. And Liliana. Mayveria says... It'll be difficult to inform the Archon. He just doesn't, he doesn't just take visitors. And Dorian says, I suppose we could convene an emergency meeting of the Senate. That might work. And Mayvarius is like, oh yes, unfortunately, an emergency meeting of the Senate means we are not just informing the Archon, we're also informing the entire Magisterium. <sighs> and we need witnesses who saw the Archdemons, which means we're going to have to, and she like looks at uh, the, the three of you, actually the five of you, who all saw the archdemon. I'm, I think I'm just like staring. I'm like, maybe we could start with something smaller and just, you know, inform Liliana. She says, yes, Liliana would want to know. And she could sit in as a character reference for the witnesses, perhaps. She was the one who sent us out, after all. Yeah, we only found this because she sent us out there in the first place. Darian says, okay, Mayfarious, would you mind convening the meeting and Mayveris nods. She says, of course I will, darling. And she, like, she can tell that Dorian's also very upset and she, like, puts a hand delicately on his back. Uh, and then she, uh, strides out to get the ball rolling. Uh, and he says, the rest of you go get cleaned up from the road. We're gonna have to be on the Senate floor probably within 24 hours. So if you have any nice clothes, wear those. Mayveris heads out to get that started and Dorian stands up looking like five or ten years older than he did last time. And then he finally looks across the room at Fenris and Kat. And he says, all right, well, um, I guess we should find out who this is. Oh, sorry, this this is Fenris? And I assume you are Magister Dorian Pavis. And Dorian says, ah, yes, that's me. What are, um... What are you doing here, if I may ask? We we met him on the road. Uh, he and... He hates slavers. Yes. Oh, that is a good quality to have. Yes. Uh, he he and Cat were... Uh... Cat barks. <laughs> <laughs> I pat Cat's head. <laughs> um, Why is the dog named Cat? We don't know. It's... Svenra says, Levon Hawk has a strange sense of humor. And Dorian, his, he, he perks up and he says, Levon Hawk? You know Levon Hawk? And he says, I am intimately familiar with him, yes, and his dumb <laughs> sense of humor. And Cat barks again. <laughs> and he says, wait a minute, I think I read about you. Tale of the Champion, Varric's book. And Fenris uh, rolls his eyes and he says, yes, and before you ask, the romance was completely overwritten. <laughs> 
I thought it was very romantic, but okay. <laughs> There's a book about it, apparently. And he says, well, I, uh, I would absolutely be delighted to have you on our side. From everything Varric has told me about you, you do enjoy recreational slaver killing, and we always need more of that in the Lucerne. And Venris holds up a hand. Uh, and he walks a little bit closer to Dorian and, like, stares him down. Uh, and Fenris is pretty tall for an elf, um, but Dorian is still a couple, he's got a couple inches on him. And Fenris says, I want to make this perfectly clear, Magister. I do not trust you or your kind. And immediately Dorian's like, I don't blame you, we're awful. (laughs) (laughs) And he says, the first sign I see of any foul play, you will make a very dangerous enemy. Dorian says, good, I hold you to it. Which kind of takes Fenris a little bit by surprise. And Dorian says, I don't want any corruption within the ranks either, Fenris. I formed the Lucerne. And then, like, from, like, outside three blocks away, Maveris clears her throat. Maveris formed the Lucerne. (laughs) (laughs) With the explicit purpose of killing slavers, freeing slaves, and redeeming and restoring to Vinter. And Fenris kind of scoffs, and he says, That is our purpose, and if you see any sign of deviation, I want to be the first one to know. And Fenris says, I agree that killing slavers and freeing slaves is an honorable goal. Whether or not Tevinter can or even should be redeemed for its crimes is another matter entirely. But fine, for now, you have an ally in me. Uh, let's set the scene. So this is going to be a two-person job, uh, getting Cassandra into something that is magisterium appropriate, right? <laughs> yep, there we go. Yep, I am very tall, and there's horns. Yeah, there are horns to consider, and also she's like six foot eight, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we need to canonically tall. establish how tall she is. That's true. It's we've we've what we've vacillated between like six and a half feet tall to like fifteen feet, I think. So <laughs> like six to come to up seven. Like okay, come on, feet. we never got that tall. Yeah, let's go with like six eight, six nine. That sounds good. Okay. There's this big walk-in closet in the master suite, uh, and Dorian has steered you into it, and he's recruited Elian to help. Uh, and he is he keeps sending you into the closet. Kasan is like, try the robe with the purple, and then he sends you back in. Like, no, that's not good. That doesn't look good. Try a different shade of purple. <laughs> and it's been going on like this for almost an hour now. And I assume Cassandra does not understand the importance. <laughs> right. Also, like, the difference between, like, shades of purple. She's, I'm just like, what? <laughs> just goes back in and, like, grabs another one. Like, like this one? <laughs> no, the one next to it. Okay. <laughs> Don't you think maybe the green? Not with her complexion. I'm really thinking deep blue or purple. Hmm. I just, like, hover my hand, like, this way, this way, this way. I said, no, no, no. Try the purple one. Go ahead. Close the door. We'll wait. Okay. And then I like close the door. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So I think while you're trying on the next one, um, Elian just kind of glances over at uh, Dorian. Uh, I had a dream the other night. Yep, people tend to. He like lies back on the chaise long. <laughs> I think it was more than that. You... Remember the day that we met? How, um, somehow I cast magic? Uh, yes. The reason for which this whole mess precipitated. Yeah. Um, I met someone in my dream, and they're, uh, it's, it was a mage, and they said that they're, I guess, trapped? in me he sits up a little abruptly and he says excuse me okay let me back up it was i was having a terrible dream that things were attacking and this this elf just banished it with a spell like he was protecting me dorian cans his head to one side okay he he didn't know anything about the fade he didn't know what a tranquil was. Um, he knew things about magic, but he didn't. 
Dorian holds up one hand and he says, why does he need to know about Tranquil? Who exactly were you dreaming about? <laughs> was, <laughs> and you can see his big brother instinct flaring up again. No, 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 no. It was nothing like that. It, I, I was dreaming about just a conversation I had the other night with Leander. It wasn't consequential to the attack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she kind of fidgets nervously. It's like, okay, Cassandra, <laughs> come out any time now. <laughs> Seriously, that that bit's not important. the The elf said that his name was Compassion. So he was a spirit. I I don't know. He seemed different. He holds up one hand to stop your explanation. He says, "Powerful spirits are always named after a virtue that they embody." Just as demons embody our vices, spirits can embody our virtues. There could be a demon of sloth and a spirit of vivacity. There could be a demon of desire and a spirit of temperance. There are spirits of compassion that exist. It sounds like that's what you encountered. You're saying it was trapped inside of you? That, that was how he explained it. I don't know. I take this opportunity to emerge. <laughs> Finally. Like, is this how it's supposed to go? Elian goes over and fixes the ties. Because <laughs> you have them completely wrong. Dorian says, mm, what are we thinking about the color? Yeah. I just don't know. I, th I feel like it either needs to be a darker shade of purple or a lighter shade of blue. I don't know. I was thinking midnight blue. Mm. I sort of like crane around and look at Elian like, you saw an elf too? You saw an elf? Are we all just having dreams where we meet strange spirits and not telling Dorian? Oh, yes, mine was called Faith. <laughs> she, like, throws up his hands. How, how fucking many of you- Listen, Dorian, I'm telling you now! I couldn't have told you before because we were on the road! He says, you mage, you should have told me about this immediately. Why didn't you? I was busy reading your books about Somniari, sorry. Uh. <laughs> he says, okay, so you were confronted by spirits in the Fade, one about one of Faith, one of Compassion. You didn't make any deals with it, like- some people we know, he says, glaring at the door in the general direction of Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> no, it it wanted me to, though. Mm, the same. I also refused her help. He says, hmm. Well, I am going to generally advise against making deals with anyone, even if they are spirits and not demons. I sort of like look at Elian and like, but trapped inside you? That, that that's how he explained it i i don't know any more than you do hmm. faith was also confused about the fade and mages but i she didn't say she was trapped he um he also said something about not knowing when he was is it possible he was i don't i don't know an ancient spirit do they do they have age uh dorian swears yeah. and he says i hate to say it but you know who i wish i could ask lannon solace oh solace was an expert in the fade and in spirits if anyone would know the answer it would be him although lannon did know quite a lot learned quite a lot from him so maybe he'll know once he comes to minrathis for some goddamn reason he seemed to stress it was important when he visited yeah. me. It's always important. That's the problem with Lennon. He does things because they're important without realizing that it can have very real consequences for him. It's the reason he threw himself at Corypheus like some damned idiot. If he gets himself hurt or killed while he's here, I'm never going to forgive myself. Well, you, you made yourself clear that you were afraid for him. He, he knows that. And he never listens. It's that's the kind of person he is. More brave than sensible. Can like I sort of nod like, yeah, we have one of that too. <laughs> <laughs> you clean yourselves up. You get yourselves as dressed up as you can allow. I imagine, Cassandra, you had your clothes picked out for you, and the whole way to the Imperial Palace, Maveris is, like, adjusting it. Like, it's a very <laughs> nice robe. Like, obviously, it was made for someone quite a lot shorter than you. Yeah. Um, but they made up, it, like, the gown was supposed to have, like, a train 
for a normal sized person, but for you, it just it's the correct length. Right, it's just a dress. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, and Mayveris is, like, fussing with you the whole carriage ride back, and she says, well, you look very, very smart. Um, and everyone except, I mean, the only person that I can't, like, they would have to bring as many people who saw the Archdemon as possible. So Fenris and Zevran are coming. I feel like Dorian and Mayveris have to be there, because they're they're actual magisters. Like, they're the ones who are calling this emergency convening. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Leander is Te still technically the personal slave of Dorian, uh, so he's probably there, but I can't imagine, like, Talgan? Talgan probably wouldn't be there. And yeah, he'd be the only one left behind, huh? Somebody's gotta watch the house. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine, Talgan hates politics. Like, he viscerally, <laughs> yeah. viscerally hates politics. I was like, politics. are we seriously gonna throw, like, Fenris in the middle of <laughs> to venture politics? Oh no. I mean, we need yeah, he, like, he has impressed upon you that we need as many witnesses as possible yeah. to make it sink in with the Magisterium. And even then, it probably won't work, because it's the Magisterium. Mm -hmm. And Mayveris is, like, adjusting your robe the whole way back, and she says, you look very nice, my dear. I just sort of, like, look at what she's adjusting, like, I, it was chosen. I don't really understand how it works. She says, well, they did a good job. You look very smart. <laughs> I sort of, like, fidget. I'm like, thank you. So do you? She says, oh, well, kind of you to notice. And she does indeed have a new, uh, very fitted black gown with this great slash of blue through it. She looks <laughs> very nice. Uh, Dorian is also looking quite smart. He's probably wearing, like, uh, red and gold, uh, red leather with, like, gold jewelry and fastenings. Leander is a slave, so he's dressed in his usual attire. <laughs> uh, Fenris would not get dressed up for the Magisterium with a gun to his head so yeah, he is wearing like, mm -mm. exactly what he wore coming in because it's still clean and fight me about it <laughs> <laughs> Severin got cleaned up a little but he's a little too nervous to get really cleaned up yeah is Elian wearing like a fancy ass fucking outfit oh, I'll bet. he's probably toned it down forcibly uh, after Dorian wouldn't let him wear what he wanted to. No, you can't have the huge chapeau with the feather in it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sabre? What are they wrangling oh, you into? I have refused to wear anything that's not. <laughs> You're in Team Fenris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, nope. Resentful that you have to be here. Dress up for a bunch of fucking magic using humans. <laughs> I think Elian managed to convince you to at least put on, like, a non torn shirt. Oh, aren't we fancy? <laughs> It's still dirty, though. <laughs> right. He had to roll around and, like, jump around in the tree or something. I don't know. Uh, so as you roll closer to the Imperial Palace, there are a lot of other carriages that are also um, getting close because you know, this is an emergency meeting. They convened it as soon as possible, and it's not set to start for a couple hours, which means you've got a little while to talk to Divine Victoria uh, and inform her first because, you know, you were right. She should know first. Uh, she also has some skin in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, and as soon as you get inside, the Magisterium proper is absolutely bustling. Uh, and indeed, the fashion in Tevinter sure is... It, Something. It sure, it sure is. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. <laughs> yep. It's very, very ostentatious. Lots of peacock feathers, lots of wide A-line skirts, uh, lots of extremely dramatic robes. <laughs> I feel like Elian pouts at Dorian for have, making him tone down. <laughs> Dorian refuses to apologize. <laughs> uh, and he guides all of you uh, to the very back of the Imperial Palace where uh, Divine Victoria is staying. And there seems to be some hustle and bustle going on on this end of the palace as well. Although it's mostly functionaries and servants crisscrossing the area down here. Uh, and... Dorian is let into this small sitting room uh, where Divine Victoria, Leliana, uh, is being prepped uh, by a couple of servants who, you know, putting some final hemming adjustments on her robe and, you know, uh, putting her headdress on for her because it's huge. Uh, Dorian, of course, bows deeply uh, upon seeing Leliana and she's like, Dorian, you really don't have to do that. It's perfectly fine. Uh, and she waves you all inside and she says... I take the news you found to be quite grave if you immediately convened an emergency council of the Magisterium. I'm afraid so, my lady. Is everyone all right? Um, for now, but there's another blight. We saw an archdemon. She goes absolutely ashen. She says, 
you're sure? And Zeverin in the back has folded his arms over his chest and says, Leliana, I saw it. With my own eyes. It was an archdemon. And Leliana looks kind of, like, winded, like, physically out of breath for a second. Uh, and she sort of waves the servants off and sits down slowly, and she says, Make her. Well, this is... <laughs> Everyone's so concerned about this. I think it's, like, just sinking in for, for me anyways. That this is, like, a really big fucking deal. The giant, horrifying dragon-not-dragon dragon thing flying directly over your head didn't convince you. Awesome. <laughs> There's, just, there's a lot of very dangerous things. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so Divine Victoria has sat down and it looks like she's trying to catch her breath and she says, All I can hope at this point is that you managed to convince anyone of the seriousness of this situation. And she says, I'm actually about to talk with the Arishok now. Maybe, maybe he'll be able to. I go stock still and like panic crosses my face and i look at dorian like what? dorian says liliana let's be reasonable i don't think the Arishok is going to be the one who's going to be reasonable about a blight and liliana says you might be surprised dorian the Arishok, as it turns out i got a glimpse of him and he's an old friend and zevern is staring back at her in confusion and liliana says zevern it's sten sten is the Arishok now and zevern says wait our Sten? The Sten. Sten Sten. Our Sten. Liliana says, yes, it's really him. <laughs> she looks to you and he says, he fought alongside Ren Sabre during the Blight. He was there when it happened. He helped destroy the Archdemon. If anyone would take a Blight seriously, it would be him. I sort of like look at them in absolute confusion. Like, you said Sten and then I was shocked. What? I don't, I don't understand. You, you have to understand, Cassandra, for us, names are permanent. He introduced himself as Sten, and we still call him Sten, even though he is now Arishok. But he is our friend, or something resembling our friend. He fought with us during the Blight. Surely if there was anyone who would take this threat seriously, it would be him. And surely there would also be no one who would, no one else who would take a mage, a Cerebos free, more seriously than him. She says, you don't have to meet him, sweetheart. I promise. Maveris beside you is like rubbing your shoulder. He says, we'll keep you out of sight. You don't have to confront him. You'll be perfectly safe. Okay. And I'm like gripping. I'm like trying to like grip her hand like. <laughs> she says, all right, well, we know what we have to do. We have to convince. Oh, and she like, like even she's starting to flag at like how difficult this is going to be. We're going to have to convince Every single magister of the danger, and hopefully rally the Imperial army to the defense to track down the Archdemon. We're going to need to go to Weishaupt as soon as possible and talk to the Grey Wardens. We're going to need to talk to King Alistair. I'm sure I could pull a few strings. <laughs> Elian is just kind of wilting at, like, the thought of all of this. This is a lot. I'm just sort of, I think, I'm staring around in confusion and I say sort of, like, like out loud, confused. Why is this- this will not be so hard. We saw it. We saw it happening. We will just tell them and they will believe us. Dorian- <laughs> Dorian is the first one to burst out laughing. <laughs> like, ha! Yes! They'll just be perfectly reasonable about it. The Magisterium is known for being exceptionally reasonable. That's why we still have so many slaves. I do not understand. I do not understand. We- we saw the- we saw it coming. Zevran here, he has seen it before. He is telling the truth. He says, listen, on a good day- Wrangling the Magisterium is like trying to wrangle a sack of cats. They have a lot of reason to doubt me and Maeveris, and we're the ones who are convening the council. And they have absolutely no reason to want to help. It's like, well, if the Kyun is going to help us, which that... Oh boy, listen, I, I know you know this person, Liliana, but I find it difficult to believe that the entire Kyun will just go along with this plan of stopping the Blight. With the help of the Deventer Imperium! He's like, he's getting a little hysterical. Yes, the Kyun will just set aside their arms and just help the Deventer Imperium when we ask. I'm sure that'll go fine. It will not go fine. <laughs> it's not helping. I'm just saying, we're ancient enemies. It will not go fine. We hate each I, other. The Deventers I'm not and arguing that it's extraordinarily, like, groundbreakingly unlikely, but that's not helping keep Dorian calm. 
Yeah, Dorian is already, he's already decided that this is absolutely fucking nuts and that it's, like, this plan is fucking doomed. <laughs> yes, the Kunari will help the Deventer Imperium fight the Blight, and so will the Grey Wardens because they're not unnecessarily obstinate about everything they do. And of course, the Empress of Orlais will definitely help us as well. And, you know, I'm sure the King of Ferelden, who's thousands of miles away, is also going to be of great assistance to us. <laughs> May Varys, like, forces Dorian to sit down. She's like, sit down and stop talking. <laughs> Doing nothing to encourage your witnesses here. Who, who it just occurs to me, does, don't have any proof. I think uh, I'm looking horrified back and forth, and I'm like, well, I suppose we don't have anything but our words. Exactly, Dorian says. And, like, Mayveris pours him a cup of wine and is like, just drink this and stop talking. <laughs> Divine Victoria says, if you want, of course, I will I will vouch for your credibility. I know Zevran personally, so it should be fine. They'll, oh, I'm sure there'll at least be a few magisters who will be reasonable about it, right? There should be at least some who will listen to reason. And Mayveris is like, of course. Yeah. Sh sure. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Alien's getting more nervous by the minute. Uh, Mavera says, well, we've got the Inquisitor coming north. That'll help, right? And Liliana says, yes, that will help. That should that should help. And like, she also does not look convinced. <laughs> like, I think I, I turn back to everyone and I'm like, well, is there anything we could do that would help? Do we, is there proof we could get or? She says, well, unless you have a, you have a scale of the archdemon that you broke off and can show them? I don't think so. Mayveris says, Listen, the most important person in the room that you're going to need to convince would be the Archon. His name is Radonis. He's been Archon for about 25 years now. And he is the most important person in that room. He is the leader of the Senate. Uh, he is the leader of the Imperial Army. You'll know him immediately. He'll be sitting on the big throne in the center of the room. You will be testifying to him. It is important that you don't lie. Don't embellish the truth beyond what is true, but you have to impress upon him the gravity of the situation. Archon Radonis is... She hesitates. He's secretive. And he's not unreasonable, but he's also very hardened by... To enter politics, you understand. Oh, God. So the the magisterium uh, is absolutely bustling. Almost every single magister of the Imperium is in attendance, and they are all taking their formal seats, which you can see uh, Divine Victoria has that little balcony. Um, she is considered a diplomatic guest. Uh, so she has she's not a part of the negotiations or anything because she's not an Imperial citizen. She's not a magister, but she is like... It is of interest to her to observe the negotiations. Um, and so she's got this little balcony that's overlooking it. And the chamber, the formal chamber with that big, beautiful glass, stained glass ceiling is absolutely packed. And Dorian and Mayveris are standing on the other side of some double doors. And they're getting you last minute preparations. And he says, so just answer any questions put to you. Don't embellish the truth. Don't lie, but also try to impart the gravity of the situation on them. Do you have any last minute questions? I have a look of just sheer panic on my face. Dorian says, good. So, uh, anyone else? <laughs> yeah, I'm just sort of standing there, like, shaking my head, like, nope, just want to get this over with. I, yeah, pretty much feel like we're damned if we do, damned if we don't at this point. <laughs> I'm regretting not wearing a fancier outfit. Told you! For the first time in my Fucking life. told you! <laughs> That's what you're regretting now? Maybe it makes you better at speaking. <laughs> Dorian says, okay, nice deep breaths. Remember, it's been several months since anyone's died in the Imperium floor. That's an option. Also, I will protect- I, pr I probably should have opened with that. I will protect you. I won't let anyone hurt you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Do we get our weapons? Or, or Nope. Oh, fuck. There are no weapons on the uh, Imperial Senate floor, which is sort of a bad punchline because all the magisters are, are mages, mages, right? So what the fuck do so, yeah. they need weapons for? Exactly. <laughs> Dorian and Mayveris take their spots at the front of the group of you. Dorian looks sideways at Mayveris and he says, Well, old friend, shall we get this over with? 
And my various straightens herself and rises to her full height of like five foot six. <laughs> uh, and she says, we shall. And she threads her arm in his and he pushes open the doors with a burst of magic. And the whole magisterium floor goes very, very quiet. At the very end of the room is a figure uh, robed in green and gold with a very long beard and a, th- a staff carved in the shape of three snakes over his back. And you can tell with only a glance that that is definitely Archon Radamus. And he is watching you very, very critically as you approach the center of the Senate floor. Mayveris projects her voice surprising with like a surprising amount of volume and authority as she says, In the speech of the trade tongue, for our guests who do not speak Tivim, thank you for joining us. I am sorry to have disturbed you when the Senate is out of session, but we have recently discovered that we are in the midst of a blight. And the sound, the, re- the reaction of that word, it sweeps across the magisterium floor like thousands of serpents all hissing at each other at the same time. Uh, and Archon Radonis notably stays very, very still, just watching the proceedings from his throne in silence. Dorian says, at the behest of the Southern Divine, and he inclines his head uh, toward uh, Liliana, who is up in her little balcony, and she nods back. We sent a few scouts of ours south along the Imperial Highway to follow up on rumors of Darkspawn attacks. And what they found erases all doubt. You may not recognize some of these people, but... This elf right here, and he says, putting his hand on Severin's back, and Severin, he looks like he's dead inside. <laughs> like He's just standing there absolutely stone still. This is Zevran Aranai, companion to the Warden, the hero of Ferelden who ended the Fifth Blight. He was among those who saw the Archdemon fly off out from a cave near the coast of the Notion Sea. And the whispering doesn't get any quieter. And the Archon loudly... Uh, crashes the heel of his staff against the floor and he says we will put these witnesses to questioning be seated and dorian nods to a small ring of chairs in the very center of the room for you all to sit down i feel like elian takes his extremely you know he's slipped into the etiquette mode um and says just very very stiff backed seated very tall and just nervous as hell, but trying not to let on. <laughs> uh, Dorian and Maveris, who are not technically witnesses, remain standing. Um, and Radonis says, The questioning may now begin. I believe I saw Magister Andoran with a very pointed look. And there is a woman near the, uh, the front balustrade that separates the floor from the seats. Uh, Lean forward. She has a huge blue peacock feather in her hair. Uh, And she says, Yes, who exactly are these witnesses that we're supposed to take the word of? And Dorian nods for you all to introduce yourselves. Uh, I am Elian Bayard of Orle. So I I awkwardly uh, stand up and I say, I am Sabre of the Dalish. And sit back down again. I stand and say, Cassandra. And then then immediately sit down again. Fenris uh, rises and snarls at the magister, just Fenris, and then he sits back down. Uh, Zevran says, and you have already been introduced to me, I believe, Zevran Aranai. And he sits back down, and the magister uh, grips the edge of the railing a little bit tightly and says, So, if I am not mistaken, we're to take the word of three elven savages, a Kunari mage, and... Who even is this Orlesian? None of them are imperial citizens, and we all know the ties that Magisters Pavis and Tailani have to certain terrorist organizations, and that draws a bunch of different shouts and hisses and whispers from all corners of the room. And Radonis loudly slams his staff down, and order is restored in the Senate. And he says, That, Magister, was not a question. <laughs> oh, good. And the Magister inclines her head delicately to the Archon and says, Forgive me, Archon. And she says, I'll phrase it then in the form of a question. Why should we take anything you or your witnesses say seriously, Magister Pavis? And Magister Pavis uh, 
folds his fingers in front of his chest and takes a deep breath and he says, Let's assume for a moment that I'm lying. That I summoned an emergency meeting of the Magisterium right now uh, with the intent of duping you all into thinking that there's a blight. Why? And the floor of the Senate is quite quiet at that. He says, Why would I choose a lie like this? Something that is so tremendous in scope that it could destroy the whole world. What, to make a whole bunch of magisters who already hate me, hate me slightly less? Another magister on the other side of the room stands up and he says, What exactly did you see? And how do you know it wasn't just a high dragon? There have been nests of high dragon by the coast of the Notion Sea in the past. High dragons are not usually accompanied by darkspawn. That gets a couple more whispers. Severin, um, he takes a he takes a hip flask off. Yep, God. He sucks yep. some liquor into the floor of the Senate, and he takes a big old swing, mm-hmm. and he says, "You really want to question my memory? Me? I was there when the hero of Ferelden brought down the archdemon that ended the fifth blight. You want to question my memory, Magister? How many archdemons have you seen?" And uh, Dorian gives him a very severe look. Like that's enough, Severin. <laughs> Uh, another magister further back this time stands up and he says, A question for the witnesses. Are any of you affiliated with the Lucerne? I like, I have this look of like panic. Uh, Dorian, um, also, he, like, he obviously was like expecting something like this question. It's like, Archon, I must protest. How is this relevant? And the magister bites back in. The Lucerne are a terrorist organization bent on the destruction of Tevinter. Surely. Whether or not they're affiliated with them is relevant to their character, sir. And she looks very earnestly at Archon Rodonis, who is staring um, quite... He has a very interesting contemplative look on his face. <laughs> and abruptly from the, uh, the little balcony up above, Divine Victoria stands up and says, If you doubt their character, then you can take it upon my word. I'm the one who sent them down there. I have no reason to mistrust them. In fact, I've known some of them for years now. And she sort of smiles down at Zevran, and Zevran does not smile back. Mm, not, not a good time. <laughs> and the magister says, So you're not going to answer the question? Whether or not you have any affiliation with the Lucerne? I think Elian just kind of darts his eyes over at Dorian and at um, Mayveris, kind of like, what do we do? Yeah, Dorian and Mayveris are kind of looking at each other like, uh, like if how they want to answer this question like they're being more insistent than they assumed that they would be like they had they have the southern divine here and it's like is that not a fucking good enough character witness literally fantasy poem <laughs> right isn't good enough for you motherfuckers i'm not gonna lie if i lie it's gonna be obvious i'm just gonna keep my mouth shut mm-hmm. good plan when the silence stretches longer um the magister says their silence speaks volumes don't you think archon Redonis? After all, it is well known that Magister Pavis comes from, and she sort of, like, wrinkles her nose, undesirable stock. He had the same leniences as his father had, and that gets a little more, um, a little more whispering involved. And as for Magister Tailani, we all know his true origin. And Magister Tailani keeps her hands folded very demurely at her stomach. And Archon Radonis again slams his staff against the table, and he says, a character witness is only necessary if we have reason to suspect that there is a lie being told. And I would like everyone to consider the question that Magister Pavis asked, because it was a good one. What reason would he have to lie? Why about this? And the Magister, who had initially raised the protest, says, because he's trying to destroy Tevinter, destroy everything that we stand for in this society. And Dorian immediately says, slavery? And that gets a lot of anger out of the crowd. <laughs> I feel like Elian just reaches over and just kind of tries to hold on to his sleeve. <laughs> he says, if you accuse me of trying to destroy slavery, not only do I not deny it, Magister, I happily assign myself the label. I am anti-slavery. I think it is a stain upon our legacy, one of many that we have yet to confront. So am I anti-slavery? Yes. Am I anti-imperium? No. Do I have any reason to lie here on the Imperial Senate floor? Also, no. 
and it doesn't take long. Like, a couple more magisters stand up and start to shout questions at you, but then more magisters start shouting over those magisters, and it quickly gets absolutely out of hand. Mm. And everyone is demanding questions of you, and there are definitely a couple, like, within a couple minutes, people are, like, throwing fire at each other, and it's absolute <laughs> oh, fucking God. chaos. Everyone roll perception for me. Oh, goody. Oh, boy. Cassandra, mm-hmm. as this bedlam is unfolding around you, you are sort of like, you, lo- you look frantically up, just like on instinct of the divine, and mm-hmm. divine Victoria looks like, oh god, I knew this was going to be, this was going to go badly, but I didn't realize how badly it was really going to go. Um, and you look from her to the other side where the other balcony is, and suddenly you see the air is shock. Oh, <gasps> shit. <laughs> About seven foot five. No horns, dressed in resplendent black and silver armor. He's looking directly at you. I sort of just go completely still. Like, all the stuff that I ran away from is now all all coming, rushing back all at once. Like, oh no. Uh, He has both arms folded behind his back, and he's flanked on either side, of course, by two Barisad, uh, his uh, personal guard. Uh, and yeah, there's no mistaking it. He is staring directly the fuck at you. Yeah, what other Kunari is there for him to look at? <sighs> uh, and eventually, like, as soon as someone starts screaming about being set on fire, uh, Radonis, uh, like, he's been trying to get them to shut the fuck up for a while now, but it's clear that he's absolutely lost control. Like, a statement like this, which is so dramatic from people like them who have, you know, clear, if not obvious, ties to the Lucerne. Uh, he's just, he grits his teeth, he looks directly at Dorian and Maveris, and then he jerks his head backwards as if to say, meet me inside. And he turns on a heel and he storms uh, back to the back of the Imperial Senate. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Excellent. Are we supposed to? If we're not Oh yeah, no, you're go going. Oh, uh, Dorian, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Dorian looks at the, at the five of you and he says, well, hope you guys are ready for this. Who's ready to meet the Archon? I am not. I'm still, like, standing in place, like, absolutely terrified to move. Mayveris looks back at you and she says, Darling? He saw me. The Aeroshock saw me. She says, The Aeroshock? And she looks up, and she actually takes a couple steps back. Like, she clearly hadn't expected him to be here. As she grabs your wrist and steers you away, pulling you back. It's like, it's okay. It's all right, darling. Listen to me. As soon as you're in the hallway, she grabs both of your hands. She shuts the door behind you and she says, look at me, Cassandra. And she puts her hands on your face. Look at me. Are you listening? I look directly at her like I'm shaking. And I'm like, we will not let him take you. Do you understand? We will not let him take you. We have powerful allies. You're not going anywhere. Do you remember what I told you? She grips the uh, the wrist that still has her kerchief bound around it. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. Your people now. We're not giving you up without a fight. Okay. And I, like, try to calm myself, like, all right. Dorian says, was that the fucking Arashok? What's he doing here so early? Nivera says, I don't know, but it hardly matters now, does it? He's seen Cassandra. Dorian says, oh, well, great. Let's add that to our substantial list of problems then, shall we? Does anyone else want to ruin my day a little bit more? I'm sure we could think of something. I've got a blight happening. My best friend is going to put himself in danger by coming all the way to Tevinter. I saw a six-eyed wolf in my dream. Okay, great. Thanks. I was hoping. <laughs> oh no, it's <laughs> The timing. That's oh, perfect. That's fine. Great. Love it. The six-eyed wolf is, of course, in Dalish mythology, the dread wolf, and I'm sure that doesn't mean anything. I'm sure that's going to be fucking fine. It was definitely Fen Harel, it's not fine. Uh, vi- as you all are talking, there's a voice from behind you. Pavis? Tylani? Uh, I think we all, like, spin around. I s- it, like, still in, like, a defensive position, even though I have no weapons. <laughs> Archon Radonis is standing about 20 feet away from you, and he says, Inside, all of you. Now. Elian complies, politely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dorian kind of grits his teeth and walks inside, all the others trailing, and the it seems like the Archon has his own private sitting room uh, in the Imperial Senate. And it is, of course, twice as decadent as the one for the Divine, because, you know, it's Tevinter. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as uh as soon as everyone is inside, uh Radonis 
looks at the two bodyguards who are just like shadows next to him and he says out and both of the bodyguards seem a little bit they're, they're taken aback for a minute but then they both incline their heads and they leave the room which either means he is stupid enough to think he's completely safe here from you or he is dangerous enough that he is completely safe here oh good <laughs> love that Radana sits down and he says you couldn't have thought of a better way to do this. Do what? Yeah, Dorian uh, looks a little bit flabbergasted. He says, How would you have preferred us to inform the Magisterium of a Blight, Archon? And he says, Any way but this? Telling them directly? Now they have to obfuscate and dance around it and they'll never get anything done. And Mayveris is like, I'm sorry, Archon, are you saying that- Are you saying you believe us? He says, of course I believe you. Why would you lie? About a blight? That would be the stupidest thing you could possibly lie about. Well, that's good at least. He says, but I think I might be the only one in the entire Magisterium who does. And listen, the, the power of the Archon is somewhat overblown. It's true that I can make and strike down laws, but it all comes with a heavy political cost. I'm not going to be able to rally the Imperial Army without the consent of at least half of the Magisterium. You know that. And Dorian still seems a little bit blown away by the fact that you you really believe us. Like, we don't have to convince you at all. <laughs> <laughs> and Radana says, it is infinitely easier to convince one man than it is to convince the Magisterium of anything. He says, yes, I believe you. I believe we're in a blight. And I will pull all of my ambassadorial wherewithal to talk to the Grey Wardens. And I'll try to get the ball rolling, speaking with the leaders of Antiva and Orle and Ravane. We'll try to get something started, but you have- I want to be clear about this. You bungled this a little bit. You shouldn't have gone directly to the Magisterium. <laughs> this is delightful. <laughs> Mayvera says, well, if it helps at all, the Inquisitor is coming north. He says, do you want to get him assassinated? Not particularly. Dorian's like, that's what I said, but he wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> Why does everyone keep saying that? Because he's an elf and this is Tevinter. And I'm a canary, and this is Deventer. Yes, but you are not the Inquisitor, he says. You are not an extraordinarily powerful political figure who also happens to be an elf. Archon Radonis stands up, and he looks very meaningfully at, uh, at Dorian and Averis, and he says, I am only going to say this once, because this is the only time I can be absolutely sure that everyone who wants to hear is too busy arguing with someone else to overhear me. And he says, I believe in your cause. I think slavery is just as much of a stain on Tevinter's legacy as you do. He says, I agree with your assessment that Tevinter needs to reckon with its sins, but it is going to take a lighter and more delicate hand than this. And Dorian looks absolutely fucking floored. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> like, how I feel hearing that. Yeah. Like, he believes me? He he agrees with me? He wants to end slavery too? The Archon? Seriously? <laughs> and he says, I want to help you however I can, which admittedly is, there aren't very many ways. The balance of power that I've struck is very delicate, and one misstep could send the whole thing crashing down. He says, however, and he looks very, very deliberately at Dorian and Maveris, if at some point I were to step down as Archon, not having a son or heir, I would be able to appoint someone to take my place. Oh, shit. <laughs> and they would have a whole basket of cats to deal with on their own, but they would have the benefit of doing it from a different position. And Dorian, this was not the direction he thought this was going. <laughs> like, he thought he was about to get ripped a new one by the Archon, and instead he's like, wait a minute, you're saying you want me or Mayveris to take over for you after you step down he says i'm old and i'm fucking tired of politics yes i want to hand the seat to someone else someone worthier of the position than my father was he says you have a couple months to figure it out hopefully i won't be assassinated before then figure it out get the inquisitor here as long as he's going to be here before he gets assassinated too Rally whatever troops you can. If this is indeed a blight, we're going to need every hand we can get. And next time, don't count on the Magisterium to do the right thing. <laughs> Please! <laughs> and exit Radonis, and you are left alone in his sitting room. Blinking stupidly. 
Yeah. Yeah, this is the most confounding thing that's happened to me in a while. <laughs> yeah, Dorian also looks a little bit shooketh. I'm sorry, did did the Archon just promise to name one of us his successor? Uh, yes. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is this the fade? <laughs> He's like looking around. <laughs> Is that what's happened? Did I slip into the fade without realizing it? Maveris says, If one of us was named the Archon, make her. Dorian, imagine it. The change that we could wreak. Dorian says, Yes, that was not lost on me. The Archon has the ability to end slavery. Permanently. Oh. Okay, that is a big decision. Yeah. No shit. I can't believe he's on our side. Maveris looks a little, actually kind of delirious. Like, <laughs> the Archon actually believes in the Lucerne's cause? Why hasn't he helped us before? And Dorian says, well, I imagine because he's the Archon, and if he even gives the impression that he's on our side, people are going to try to kill him. More than usual, I mean. They always, they're always trying to kill him, but more than usual. What do we do from here? <laughs> So I talked about this briefly with y'all. I mentioned that in Inquisition, there was like this whole big thing of your choices affect who becomes the divine. Mm -hmm. And you've got a thing like that, too. There, You're going to have to start thinking about who you want to appoint as successor to Archon Radonis. And you have two very obvious candidates. And there's a third secret option that you oh, can fuck. unlock. <laughs> <laughs> because there's always a third secret option yeah, somewhere in Dragon Age. <laughs> <laughs> Hey friends, Tessa here. If you're desperate to hear the next episode, chances are good that you can by joining our Discord server. We post links to all episodes and pre-release, and you can even chat with us and listen live as we record. Join us by going to bit.ly slash cfc discord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Crit Fail Club does not advertise at all, so if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also like it, make a post on social media about it, or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfc channel, or wherever you get your podcasts. Mm -hmm.